Hello everyone and welcome to our backyard. Today is day two of my August garden tour and I like to start on my back patio and pan the garden so you can see and really so I can see what it looks like each month that I do these garden tours. So I like starting out this way. My name is Crystal and I garden along the Texas Gulf Coast south of Houston in zone nine. And yesterday I did our garden tour of our sunny areas and today I'm going to concentrate on areas that are shady or that have a little bit of sun. Part sun, some is part shade. So I am going to go over and start first in my shade bed and then I'm going to come back and look at this patio area. Over here in the shade garden as I look down and throughout I think the real stars right now are my salvia here. It's called Forsythia sage. Let me get closer to a bloom. It's also called salvia madrensis and it's just starting to create the bloom calyx. And this will bloom this butter yellow color. <coughs> Excuse me. It will bloom and bloom golly all the way until the first frost. This is the time of year that this salvia just shines. And I love the stand of salvia that I have here. I only started out with a couple of plants and I've been adding to it as you can see throughout this whole this whole area. This is all Salvia madrensis and I do have it staked so I have a crisscrossing pattern and the reason it's staked is our hurricane <laughs> did bring it down but it has responded well and it didn't break the stalks. I guess I was really lucky at the point in its growth period. It wasn't too tall yet. So even though the hurricane laid it down, it did not break the stems. So I'm really grateful for that. And this bed, my shade bed, is also a pollinator bed because I let my coleus bloom. And I've shared with you before the reason I let my coleus bloom is because all kinds of pollinators, even though you wouldn't think this tiny little bloom is attractive to anything, it is covered in pollinators. Even hummingbirds will go to coleus. So typically I will pinch back blooms throughout the summer if they start to bloom because once coleus start to bloom, they get leggy and they do not concentrate or put their uh, resources into growth, which the reason you typically have coleus is for the beautiful foliage and the wonderful color. But I do let mine about now start to flower. So over in my shade bed is also attracts pollinators and I love it. I typically like to collect different types of coleus. These are for us annuals unless of course we don't freeze but coleus do not survive a freeze. They actually hate cold temperatures but what's interesting is they can recede <laughs> and I want to show you this. So all along here, these were reseeded 
by coleus plants that I had last year. And it takes them longer to get going. I typically don't like, and I'm not patient with trying to have coleus grow from seed, but it will. And it does, it can reseed itself. So this bed pretty much is coleus and caladiums. I did have a couple of disasters. Squirrels have been particularly destructive in my yard recently. They've dug up my two containers. For some reason they just love these containers and they dig out my caladiums. And I have not been a happy girl with the squirrels. I'm going to show you one other bit of damage that they did recently. For all of you who love squirrels in your yard, I sure wish I could ship mine to you because I would so prefer not to have squirrels in the yard because they do so much damage. Look at this. This is our drip irrigation and we had to, my husband replaced this piece this morning. I noticed in yesterday in my garden tour that some of my container plants in the south end were not getting water and look at all look what squirrels they're trying to get at the water and what's so annoying is we have water all over the yard open for them and this is what they do this is drip irrigation can you believe this ah it's so frustrating so anyway, I am not a fan of squirrels in the yard. They do try to get into attics. They will chew wood on your fascia and your soffit. We've had to replace wood on our home because they chew. And we've been told by professionals that yes, that's what squirrels do. They're just doing their thing. And the reason is, is their teeth do not stop growing so they have to chew to get their teeth in check and keep them um, if you will filed down so when they chew through my drip irrigation or they pull out caladiums and caladium bulbs i am not a happy gardener with them <laughs> one thing i noticed i have to share with you is i see that i have so on the end, I have a shrimp plant and my shrimp plants aren't blooming beautifully. I think I mentioned that in my previous video. I do think this is a, a somewhat of a downtime for them. It's been so hot, but I also need to fertilize and I have not fertilized. So since they are in containers, I do need to fertilize them. But on the end here, I have got a couple of volunteers. It's always fun to see plants seed themselves in the garden. So one of the things that we started doing is I do have three bird baths in the yard so water is available to the squirrels we have squirrels and possums and birds and pollinators and you name it but i've we're also putting down in each one of the garden beds plastic containers of water to try to get them to not eat through our drip irrigation Ugh. Uh, uh, uh. So, anyway, I have shared with you many times about this area of the garden, and this is a white leafed Dutchman's pipe, white veined Dutchman's pipe vine. And this is a huge hit with the pipe vine swallowtail butterflies. Just recently, I noticed, and I'm going to scan over here, I also have a pipe vine that grows up into my red trip tree. 
And I just noticed this is the first time this year that a female butterfly pipevine was laying eggs in my vine. And then along my fence, if you've been following my channel, you know I did something different this year. And I planted different caladium bulbs in each one of these areas along the fence. And in the heat of summer, they got a little bit too much sun and they aren't doing as gorgeously in August that they were doing earlier. In fact, they did suffer some burning. I think another issue was is they also didn't get enough water. And then on the end, I completely lost one of my caladiums due to no, not enough water, but then got a coleus reseed. Too crazy. So in my north bed, I have three containers on the, on the end, and I think I have four containers on the other end. But in these containers, I have a cassia plant that starts to bloom now. This has a yellow bloom. And it is the host plant to the sulfur, all the yellow sulfur butterflies that are in our area. And then next to it, I have a porter weed that was suffering because I had to drain the pot. And this porter weed is kind of like an orchid color, but it's just starting to bounce back. So I'm happy to see that. I'm happy I didn't lose it. And then next to that is a giant milkweed that I have and it is healthy and thriving and full of thick gorgeous leaves but my north bed is not doing great I have shared with you on a previous video that I think I lost one of my bush salvia one of my maraschino salvias which is a bummer to me. And I think it's purely due to not enough water. But I do see a green stem over there. So I think that one is not gone, but I do believe this one died. We were gone in July. We were on vacation and then we had a grandchild, which is so exciting. But in that time, we also had a broken water line into our neighborhood and they fixed it and replaced it, but it was full of sediment and debris. And that clogged some of our drip irrigation that we've been trying to find. And I think this bed got completely not, it just didn't get enough water. And so as you can see, my fennel is all gone and this has never happened before. And I've had fennel for four years now and all of it died, boom. So it just was not, it just, succumbed to not enough water but on this side I have salvia um, both a Henry Duelberg which is a native and then mystic spires so I have pollinators over here visiting these plants I have a Greg Greg's mist flower that's trying to make it it's looking pretty tough and then I have some milkweed over here let me go over there this milkweed has got very narrow leaves um, and it has been munched on. It's been flowering the whole time. This pretty little dainty flower. This reminds me of our native aquatic milkweed. Our aquatic has a little bit thicker leaves than this. But this is a native to Arizona and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try this. And We'll see how it goes. So it has been, it has been trying to 
well, it's been, it, it, it survived. Golly, now it's starting to sprinkle. Let's see if I can get, I hope it doesn't do more than just sprinkle so I can finish this up. But I do have then this area that is on my patio that gets some really nice morning sun. We got a brief little shower there. So on my patio, I have morning sun. And I usually try to put containers that I really like to take a look at. And my containers are a little bit tired at the moment. But what I do have does flower, it is flowering, and it is attracting, each one of them is attracting pollinators. So I have in the back here, I have tropical um, hibiscus, and I've got a pink flower, I've got yellow flowers, and I've got red flower, tropical hibiscus, and they are doing pretty well. They've been blooming pretty well. I do need to get these guys fertilized. They haven't been fertilized for a couple of months and that's purely because of all everything that's been happening. I have a kufia that needs full sun and I will not be planting a kufia in here again. I was hoping it was enough sun for it to flower but it just is not. And then I have an azalea that is a um, spring and fall bloomer and it depends on when it feels like it's gonna bloom. If it does, I don't think, there was one year I only got, I can't remember if it was the spring or the fall bloom. So it will, <laughs> excuse me, I've got a honeybee that was trying to land on me. And next to it, I purchased another giant milkweed and this one I did because it's hard to find it's hard for me to find the white flowers I can find the ones that flower purple which is beautiful also and I have quite a few of them but I do like the white blooms and they're a large bloom and I am going to plant this one in the ground because in my experiment last year I left three outside to see if they could make a freeze. And they did freeze, they froze to the ground, but mid, oh golly, towards the end of spring, they came back, all of them came back. And so I am going to plant, they are all the purple colored ones. And so I wanted to get another one so I could plant this in the ground. Apologize for the mowing equipment there. I guess someone over on the next street is mowing. And then I have an aloe vera plant that is just, I don't know, 25 years old maybe, and it just keeps on going. I have a mandevilla that I should have planted but didn't. I wanted to keep it in a container. And it was, let me Pan over here it was hanging here but now I am hanging up my hummingbird feeders because we are almost almost at the beginning of the fall migration we're starting to see more hummingbirds definitely more hummingbird activity and then I have a couple of planters and the planters that um, I have have a salvia in them. So this is a salvia from Australia, from the Make-A-Wish Foundation, from, um, from there. And I think this is Ember's Wish. I have three, I had three different types of them. They do not like our hot and humid summers. They do not do as well. I don't like necessarily how they perform in our conditions. I think they're, they did beautiful in the spring and the fall, but they did not shine in the summer. So that's interesting to me. And this time of year, if you're looking for a plant, a container plant, 
This is called the wishbone flower or Terinia. And I've told you about this before. This is a pollinators love this. And this is both a filler and a spiller in containers. Proven winners. We almost killed this one. I'm surprised it even came back. There were, it didn't get moved and watered for like four or five days in hundred degree temperatures. <laughs> And it's in, it's in a larger hanging basket, but still. And we had, I think, four or five stems on it that still had a little bit of green. And so we've been taking care of it and looking, look at it. It has just rewarded us. And my hummingbird is here every day checking out these blooms. All right, I'm gonna turn around and right next to the door, I have another porter weed. It's a red porter weed, and I have an Esperanza. And this Esperanza has been flowering just prolifically, and now it doesn't, it, it kind of goes in cycles here. And so now it just has a few blooms on it. It's this yellow, this yellow tubular shaped bloom that of course pollinators love. I'm in the back of my shade bed here. <laughs> but I thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you can get out into your gardens. And I hope to see you again soon.